what is a covenant? A covenant is essentially a transaction. Another word for covenant is, tra- is contract. You don't have a contract with O2. That's why your phone is not working. And what is a contract? It is a, it's a negotiation to carry out business activities. So you tell O2, O2 tells you, I will give you 200 gigabytes of, uh, what do they call that thing again? Um, of, of data if you give me, give us a hundred pounds every month. That's a transaction. It's an exchange. We will give you this if you give us this. And um, what is a covenant in reality? A covenant is an agreement between two or more parties which requires sacrifices on both parties, usually signed in blood with consequences of divine judgment if broken. That's where it is different from an O2 covenant contract. The thing with O2 is if you don't pay, they will just disconnect your phone. But with a divine covenant, what it is is that there's usually judgment. Yeah, there's usually some kind of judgment. And sometimes it's death or something is taken away. And with this covenant, the way the covenant is signed is that vows are made. Everybody say vow. What do I mean by vow? A vow is a solemn pledge made to a deity committing oneself to an act. So... The reason why our Christianity is powerless is because, like I said earlier, we make covenants at powerless altars with no sense of fear of divine retribution. So we get my, you know, first of all, many of us go to the wrong altars. So the same way, a covenant cannot stand if you, you do it in the wrong place. So two people fall in love at a nightclub, say, oh, I love you. You are sweet, you are this, you are that. Say, let's get married. And they go to the bar and tell the, the, uh, uh, the barrister, that's what it's called. But it's also called the barrister, I believe. Oh, sorry, yes, yes, yes. The bartender. No, there's another, there's another name for um, mixology, the, 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 the mixologist. Yeah. They, they also, tell, they tell them, can you join us here? Uh-huh. So, oh, da, 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 they start singing. Will that hold? That is not the legitimate place. So, it has to be, are you following? It has to be at an altar that has power. And the only places are regis- the registry, the court, and registered churches. Is this making sense? Okay. So, now the point is, be careful where you made your covenant. If you made your covenant at a powerless altar, eh, in the day of trouble, you will have no protection. You think you have protection, but you will have no protection. But also, if you made your covenant at a powerful altar, and you made a vow, ah, you better pay it. <laughs> because that spirit will pursue you. Good morning, Liberty Church Global. Good morning, everyone. God bless you as so you welcome to church. Let us take our seat even as we open the womb of the service this morning in the name of Jesus. Welcome, 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 welcome to church in the name of Jesus. We are just going to do the opening prayers. Why don't you thank God, oh Lord, Father, we thank you, oh Lord, for a Sunday like this, for your people that have come to your presence, oh Lord, to be blessed by you and your spirit, oh Lord. Father, oh Lord, this you have been manifested, oh Lord, that the devil, work of the devil should be destroyed in their lives, oh Lord. Father, as they come to you this morning, Father, oh Lord, every burden, oh Lord, in their lives, oh Lord, be removed in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. Father, oh Lord, we pray for the anointing that breaks the yokes, oh Lord, to reign in their lives this morning, oh Lord, even in this service in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. It's our season of power, and today is our dedication service. Why don't you ask for that power to come upon you? You know, the Bible says that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Father, we are praying for that power. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead is still available. What is it that you are that is troubling your life? 
What is it that you're battling with? That same power is able, oh Lord, to deliver you this morning in the name of Jesus. Why don't you just submit to the presence of the Holy Spirit? Say, Holy Spirit, I'm here, oh Lord. Without you, I can do nothing, oh Lord. I need your power this morning. I want you to speak to me in the name of Jesus. I need you to speak to my situation. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord, I am here not because of any man, oh Lord, but I'm here for you, oh Lord. Raise my heart unto you, oh Lord. Father, oh Oh Lord, bless me by your spirit, oh Lord. Let your grace that abound, let it touch my life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Reba soto reba sheke rebu. Reke ba reba sota reba yekebu. Masa taribo sheke reba reba. You know when the power of God touches you, oh Lord. He says it's a greater mighty thing that he do that he would, we would do. It is because of that he raised in the right stand of God, oh Lord. So that we can do greater mighty things in the name of Jesus. Why don't you begin to, oh Lord, speak, oh Lord to the vessel that will speak to you this morning, that I will have a word for you in season, that I will speak to your situation this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, O oh Lord. We praise your name, O oh Lord. We give you praise in this place. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. It's given privilege, O oh Lord, to welcome the sons of liberty as the leaders in worship. God bless you. Come on, TLC Global. Somebody back in by the name of the Lord. Come on, bless him right where you are online, right where you are in this room. Just lift up your voice and begin to magnify him, begin to glorify him, begin to exalt his holy name. For he alone is worthy of our praise, he is worthy of our worship, he is worthy of adoration. Oh, come on, somebody, right where you are, just begin to pour your heart, pour your heart, pour your heart. I'll put you in front.
on somebody right where you are just begin to give your voice and just let God know how much he means to you how much he matters in your life how much you need him come on just begin to pour a heart pour your heart pour your heart pour your heart you are all that matters Lord you are all that matters Lord you alone Hallelujah. Come on, are you excited to be in the presence of God? Come on, let me hear you give a shout of praise if you're excited to be in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, tap your hands with us. Hey! Listen, say it.
worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy. He alone is deserved. He alone is just. Come on, right where you are, just begin to speak your own words. Come on, just begin to avail yourself. Begin to avail yourself. Just let him know that you enjoy being in his presence. That you love to be where he is. That you love to dwell with him. Ah, that you love to seek his face. You love to know his ways. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Lift your voice, lift your voice in his presence.
matchless love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Come on, do you believe that? Come on. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Can we sing that together? Who is like you? voice in this place, huh? Singing, oh, Jesus, oh, I'm a catalabadosh, Jesus, oh.
Declare it from your heart. Declare it from your heart. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. is home. Father, we bless you. Your presence is our treasure. We are grateful to be in your presence. We pray for the grace to abide forever and ever and ever. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Good afternoon, church. You may be seated. It's your father's house. Can we have a round of applause for the phenomenal voices, minstrels in our house, sounds of liberty. I can't hear that applause. If it's to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that has blessed us with phenomenal graces, it should be louder than that, amen? Hallelujah, praise God. So my name is Ruth and I'm just here to introduce the testimony. But before we get there, I have a number of reminders for the house. How many of you know that we're live on YouTube? We're a global church. Can you have a round of applause? It's not easy <laughs> to be streaming to the ends of the earth. So hey, YouTube fam, can I ask that you like the stream so that we can increase our likelihood of being seen by the lost. We know that we're submitted to the algorithm on that side. So let's try and enhance our ratings because there's a good word in season from this altar today. Amen. And if you're in the auditorium, it's a good habit to bring out your phone and just like the stream. It helps us to make sure that the, the relevant message from the Liberty Church is reaching the ends of the earth. So I can't see anyone bringing out their phones. Don't worry, YouTube doesn't buy it. Hey, my people, love that. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we know that we have the word um, um, straight after the testimony. So please feel free to scan the QR code. The sermon notes that allow you to follow the word um, will be available. So it should be up now. If you're online, you can scan the code or click the link in our bio. It takes you through um, what we're going to be covering today. Amen. Amen. So also, testimonies are the lifeline. A li it's a lifeline in TLC. Testimonies are essentially battle scars that allow other people to see that you have crossed the finish line, you've won the battle. And I believe, God, that there are several testimonies in our midst and testimonies that are even brewing. So please scan the QR code and let us know what God has done for you so we can see it multiplied even in this generation in the name of Jesus. Amen. So loads of people know that we have a teenage expression in the house. Liberty Tribe. Hey, my people. <laughs> Love them so much. And they actually have a hybrid service happening at the same time. So if you're a young person in the auditorium, don't worry, you're all young. I can see the youth in your eyes. But if you're 13 to 19, 18, just about to head to uni, we have a space for you at the right-hand side. So feel free to, Yaz, do you want to raise your hand? Hey, <laughs> Yasmin is on team, and she'll just take you to your service straight after. And if you are watching online, we actually have a Zoom link in the bio. So click that, and you should be able to join the stream there and then. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to um, watch the testimony, and I want you to sit back, but not just sit back. Trust God that this is going to be your testimony not too long from now in the name of Jesus. Straight after, our visionary pastor will be up to give God's word. Amen. I would like to thank Almighty God for the miracle he has performed in my family. My cousin, who is 24 years of age, is a healthy young lady. She was on holiday in Dubai, suddenly fell ill and was hospitalized. Left with a heavy hospital bill, she decided to cut her trip short and return to the UK earlier than scheduled. 
On returning to the UK, she was complaining about unexplained breathlessness. She was home alone, so I rushed over to her place. As I'm not a medical professional, I called the ambulance so they can come and assess her. After waiting for hours, they turned up, assessed her, deemed her okay, and left. As she was still not feeling right, her mum took her to A&E. After several checks that spanned over 24 hours were performed, she was admitted due to what was described as a build-up of faeces in her stomach. This was baffling and we were unsure how the symptoms she was experiencing correlated, but we obviously had to follow medical guidance. She was being monitored in hospital and it seemed as if all was well. They even indicated that they will be discharging her soon. Unexpectedly, the consultant who was attending to her conducted further tests and decided she needed to be transferred to a specialist hospital right away as she was showing terminal signs. He confirmed that her liver and kidney had collapsed and if they did not put her in an induced coma, it could be fatal. She was transferred to the Royal Free Hospital, which specializes in liver and kidney treatment, where dialysis and other treatments to get her organs back to a normal state were administered. Liver and kidney transplants, among other serious medical interventions, were mooted. On the day of the 60-day Bible Challenge celebration, I took Holy Communion on my cousin's behalf and prayed to God that as I am drinking your blood and partaking in your body, my cousin's blood will be cleansed and all her organs will be restored completely. Pastor also stated that he commands healing of the body. I tapped into this and used myself as a point of contact. You see chains broken, bondage is removed. Oh, you see people healed of diseases. Rekabato Sopana. On the following Monday, she started showing signs of waking up from the coma with no complications. No transplant required, no long-lasting health conditions. She is well and healthy. The medics said she will need a liver and kidney transplant. God turned it around. The doctor said she will not be able to live a normal life. God turned it around. I want to thank the Liberty Church, Pastor Shawla for following God's word, the pastors that put me and my family in prayers, and my TED family for praying with me, checking on my well-being and being a strong support system. Hallelujah. Is that a reason to give thanks? Amen. I think coming out of a coma is a big reason to give thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. So welcome once again to uh, second service um, this Sunday. Just a few um, announcements as we prepare to receive um, the word. Um, we have a very, very special prayer workshop happening this Tuesday. Um, you, yes, it's, it's something to be excited about. Um, so uh, we have a special guest minister, uh, Pastor James Aladino, who's very significant in the prayer space in the UK. So if you want to increase your prayer life or you're already a prayer warrior and you want to take it to the next level, you're believing God for something and you just want to be equipped you know, to uh, increase in your prayer life. I want to encourage you um, to attend um, uh, this uh, Tuesday. He's, I believe, based in Birmingham or Manchester, so he's traveling in um, for this program. We won't have him all the time. Also, our select leadership kicks off this week. Is anybody uh, called to be a leader here? You believe that God has called you to distinction in some space. I mean, it could be in ministry, but it could be in the marketplace the entertainment space, the select leadership um, course is designed to help you become all that God has called you to be, to shine uh, and to operate as a leader in whatever sphere God has called you in. So there are five levels, 101, 201, 301, 401, and 501. So you progress up um, um, the leadership school, so to speak. So um, there are four-week sessions, and the next session starts this Wednesday. You can register virtually. If you go on to Eventbrite and just look for the Liberty Church, all our events are on there, and you can register for the select service. Also, if you have family and friends, we want to encourage you to please invite them to the service next Sunday. Next Sunday, there will be a live service at uh, our Lagos uh, location. Um, we now meet twice a month. 
once, uh, yes, it's also worth celebrating once virtually and once live. So next week will be a live service. Pastor Uche will be there to take the word. So please encourage family and friends who are there. Also, our Life Hack Seminar holds next Sunday, which is a very, very special service. I hope Pastor is not listening. Pastor will be 55 on the 21st of March. Amen. So um, we're planning to celebrate him a little bit um, next Sunday. Um, but after service, we'll be having a Life Hack Seminar. So if you have a family and friends that you'd love to come to church, but you don't want to bring them to service. You know, you want to introduce them gently, bring them to like a, 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 an equipping and a strategy seminar. That would be a great one to invite them to. So we've been talking about finances and multiple streams of income because God wants to build kingdom wealth. Amen. Um, so um, please feel free to join us um, after service next Sunday. Also, we want to give you our update on our Building God's House strategy. I'm sure many of you are aware that we've been raising funds. Um, it's part of the money that uh, acquired this building that we're in. Uh, but there's still a lot to be done in terms of upgrading um, the facilities as well as acquiring facilities for our Canary Wharf and our North London location. So this week, 9,000 9, came in. Do we want to celebrate that? Um, 9,000 came in, um, so we want to thank all of those who gave, and we also want to challenge those who haven't given, um, that you will believe God to increase you um, so that you can sow into building um, his house. So we're going to go into announcements now, and straight after, Pastor will be up. God bless you. Hello, TLC Global. My name is Rennie, and this is the Liberty News. I hope you enjoyed the third message in our series of March, our season of power. Here is a reminder of the major events and initiatives we have lined up for you this week. You can also check out details of our events in our weekly spotlight, which drops in your email every Monday. TLC Global invites you to our strategic prayer and intercession workshop, which takes place Tuesday at 6 p.m. at the Liberty Point. Registration is on Eventbrite and be sure to invite your family, your friends and colleagues. The monthly prayer and encouragement meeting for women ready and waiting to conceive holds on Thursday at 7 p.m. Please email the Liberty Ladies at the Liberty Church London.com for further details. Lagos will be having a taste of the Liberty experience with a live service on Sunday at 11 a.m. West African time. Please register for more information on Eventbrite. Tribe, our teen ministry, invites all teenagers age 13 to 19 to their social, a time of fun and fellowship taking place next Sunday during service across all locations. Registration is on Eventbrite and don't forget to bring a friend. So TLC Global, it's time for our new guests. So look around you, find someone new and make them feel very welcome. And also our amazing pastors would love to meet you. So if it's your first time or your first time in a long time, listen out for the announced meeting point immediately after service for a brief chat if you're on site at any of our locations. Until we come your way again next week, stay liberated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody next to you, say, stay liberated. Amen. Amen. That's what the Liberty Church is about. Good, mo good afternoon. Amen. Amen. I, uh, well, I'm in different time zones, even though I haven't traveled. Um, uh, we have three, I have three services to take today. I've one down, actually four, three and a half. Um, that's, we've had our 10 a.m. service. These are 12 noon, and right after, we're having a service with United States of America, Houston, Texas, a prophetic service from here. And in the evening, 8 p.m., I have an Instagram live conversation. So I'm not very busy. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. You look at, your, you look at the person next to you and say, you're looking better than I thought you would this morning. You're looking handsome. You're looking beautiful you're looking lovely all right and that young man that's that's not your cue to propose 
<laughs> but you can ask her out on a date. It should go out with you. Amen. God bless you all. Good morning, uh, Croydon. Good, good afternoon, rather. Good afternoon, Croydon. Good afternoon, Kenewa. Good afternoon, St. John's Wood. And also, our Houston congregation is watching live. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We are, we are advancing. We are going forward. And God is up to some powerful things. And also, we have, let's not forget our online congregation. Can we, can we appreciate our One Love congregation? Amen. And I'm going to go straight into the word in a short while. I hear my, one of my friends, old, good friends is here. Let's talk to me. Hey, good to see you. Hallelujah. She has a powerful testimony. She was supposed to give it, but, you know, we give our testimonies by video, uh, well, recorded. So in due course, she will give it to us. Hallelujah. Uh, anybody else worshiping with us for the first time? Anybody? God bless you. Come on, clap. Woo! Good to see you all. Bless you, bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles quickly to two openings. We have some serious business to do. If you are in Croydon, please make sure you listen intently. Canary Wolf, St. John's Wood. Don't be distracted. And if you are online, don't be tempted to watch something else. All right? Stay on this channel. Amen. And uh, you'll be blessed. Let's read very quickly from the book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 5. Was that testimony a powerful one? Yes. Yeah, God is still in the business of healing people miraculously. You will not need a kidney transplant. You will not need surgery. God will intervene in your affairs in the name of Jesus. So, we're looking at Psalm 50. To be honest with you, the two scriptures are a bit long-winded, but for sake of time, I'm going to just navigate and, you know, just cut some bits out. But in your own time, you can read it uh, if you can. Amen. Psalm 50, verse 5. And so that we can get the most out of it, please really focus and listen to the words. Don't just read, okay? It says, gather my saints together to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. When you read that, does it say, all Christians should gather. Is that what he says? No. It is very specific. He says, gather my saints, but those who made what? A covenant. And not just those who made a covenant, but by what? Sacrifice. Then he says, offer to God thanksgiving. And do what? Pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. And what? I will deliver. Does that mean that those who didn't offer a covenant by sacrifice might not be delivered in the day of trouble. It's just a thought to ponder upon. And then he says, I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked, God says, what right do you have to declare my statutes? What right do you have to declare he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty? What right do you have to declare that when the righteous decrees a thing, it shall be done for them. And then he says, or take my covenant in, in your mouth, seeing, watch this, that you hate my instruction or you hate my terms and agreements. And cast my words behind you, which means you don't take them seriously. He says this, and you even go further by doing this. When you saw a thief, you consented with him. Can you do something about the echo, please? When you saw a thief, you consented with him and have been a partaker with adulterers, okay? You give your mouth to evil and, and your tongue frames deceit. Look at your neighbor. Say, I don't think he's talking about you. He's talking about something else, somebody else. You sit and speak against your brother. You tell them, I don't really think he's talking about you. Mm. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I have kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you. And set them in order before your eyes. Now, consider this. You who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces. I'm praying that this will not be your story. And there be none to deliver whoever offers praise. Is anybody going to praise God today? glorifies me and to him who does what orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God 
what this scripture is essentially saying that the people God is going to back up, defend, help, are the people who, who have come to God and offered a covenant by sacrifice, but also people who pay their vows, people who live according to the terms and the agreements of the covenant, and then people who order their conduct aright. I am praying that somebody's life in this place will align with God's word and heaven will show up for them. And then we're looking at the book of 1 Samuel chapter 7. Quickly, let's do this. And then I was going to read from verse 1, but I'll probably start with verse 2 or 3. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all your heart, then put away the foreign gods and the Ashtoreths from amongst you, and prepare your hearts for the Lord, and serve him only. Tell your neighbor, say, serve God only. Tell someone next to you, say, no two timing. Mm. Say, serve him what? Only. And he will do what? He will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines, so that the children of Israel put away the bowels and the asteroids and served the Lord only. It is my prayer that you will serve God only. And then he says, and I'm skipping some few verses, and then we're going to go up until verse, figure out which verse it is. He says, and Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord of Israel, and the Lord answered him. Somebody is going to cry out to the God of Israel today, and God will answer you. Come on, that amen can be better. Uh, today, your amens have to have some you know, the carbohydrate behind it. I said, let that amen be louder. Yeah. Give it some vitamin C. Yeah. Amen. And then he says, now as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day. I pray that God will thunder upon your enemies. Ah, come on, that amen can be better. Amen. And so confused them, and they were overcome before Israel. And the men of Israel went out to Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and drove them back as below Bethkar. Somebody is going to pursue your, their enemies in prayer, amen. and you will push them back amen. so far back that they'll be out of the boundaries of your family amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray by your spirit that today you will visit us. And then that you will enlighten our darkness. Open up the doors of our heart. And as the word comes, come into our hearts. And do a new and a quick work. Lord, help us. Help us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon once again. The title or the point of my deliberation today is called how to get God to fight on your behalf or how to get God to fight your battles. I don't want to assume that you know certain things. So I'm going to kind of like backtrack and, and, and take you, you know, from, in a sense, you know, the beginning again. So this month we've been dealing with, this is the month of power or the month of the supernatural, and we've been dealing with altars and what? Covenants. And I've, I, 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 in the first service, first Sunday of this um, 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 uh, month, I spoke about the fact that altars are essentially, um, you know, the legitimate access point for spirits to come into the affairs of men. And, you know, any which way you look at it, sometimes you hear the word altar, it's scary. So I'm just basically trying to make it practical for you so that you can understand it in your everyday life, Okay. And I did a summary about the fact that altars work like a telephone network. Do you remember? And I, and, and I, you know, I, I went on and gave a whole description. But I took it a step further last week by talking about seven keys to securing covenant help. And I described number one, if you're going to go, get God's help or the help of any spirit, number one, you need an altar. Tell your neighbor, say, one, you need an altar. And number two, even though you have an altar, you need a covenant transaction. What that essentially is saying, let me explain this. When we say altar, we are talking about a place of prayer or, or a designated place. So this is an altar. So you don't just come to this altar 
if at all you're going to get the help of the Spirit of God, you are going to need to enter into some kind of covenant transaction with God. Does that make sense? Then number three, for every covenant, there are terms of agreement. I, I explained that when um, two people are getting married, when they decide to get married, they come to the altar, yeah? They love each other, and they are getting married in the marriage transaction. But there are terms and agreements to that marriage, okay? So there will be an exchange of vows that I will do this to you and for you, and you do this for me, In it? The same with our covenant agreement with God. So there are promises, there are benefits, and there are demands, and there are sacrifices, and I mentioned the fact that, you know, you can't have a marriage without sacrifices. Oh, no, you can't. You know, somebody has to lose their name. And your bank accounts are no longer yours solely. From the day I got married, my wife became happier because all of mine is hers. And all of hers, she was trying to make it hers alone. But the Lord will not permit that. <laughs> and anyway, so the, the point is, whatever is theirs is yours. And there are sacrifices that have to be made. If not, there will be no covenant. Then there's what you call a priesthood. Now, in supernatural covenant, the, the covenant is, is only active when somebody keeps stoking it. Does that make sense? You have to keep... The, the sacrifice burning on the altar. So you need a personality. You need somebody to attend to that altar. Does that make sense? By making, in the, in, in the, in the uh, demonic world or in the Old Testament, they would give weekly or yearly sacrifices or something to that effect. The same way, your own covenant is only activated by your regular prayers, your regular fasting, your regular giving, uh, and all of that. Okay? And then number, is it six? When you are consistent with the altar and the sacrifices of the altar, a spirit will show up. You will have the presence of, 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 of a spirit who will now begin to talk to you at the altar. And that is only when you have an alive altar. Many people's altars are dead because they don't do these other things. And then the, the spirit of God will begin to act on your behalf. And then number seven is that Every altar, the spirits behind them seek to renew the covenant. And so they always want to transfer, you know, their spiritual uh, uh, intervention or their interference to the next generation. And so, um, for example, my sons and I, I, my wife and I, we have two sons and they're in their 20s. Uh, one of them is in his mid-20s. And listen to this, he can't hang on Neither of them can hang on the sacrifices of our own covenant for too long now. So what is going to begin to happen is that the spirit behind our covenant will begin to try to introduce himself to them and say, I'm the God of your father and your mother. I want to come into covenant with you. And spirits are masters at that thing. They are always looking to enter the next generation. We see that happen with Jacob. He went to sleep in a place, and some angels begin to ascend, and they said, and then God the Father comes and introduces himself and says, I'm the God of your father, Abraham, and I, say, I want to enter into covenant with you. And listen to this. They always know when the covenant is running out. The same way you know when your visa in England is running out. And, and you know, you have six months to go, so what do they do? <laughs> you know, and what do you do? You say, well, to remain legitimately in England, um, you came in as a student, so you now look for another course. Uh -huh. And so the same way, you go, you, when, you take the, when, you, when you get this new course, then you can go to Luna House and say, oh, I want to extend my stay as a student. Let me tell you, anytime spirits see that the covenant or um, 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 subscription in your generation is running out, they're always looking for a way to open the door to sin in your life so that you can give them permission by your sin. May you not open that door in the name of Jesus. So let's get to the order of today. I've already established the fact that altars and covenants are a system that allows the intervention of spiritual entities. Listen to this. This is like a law. No spirit will come to help anybody if you don't open up an altar. Now, there are some things you, you can do and you, th you say, oh, I did it without knowing it. You know, you go to a psychic 
When they say, bring your hand, and they do this and this, listen to this, that's an altar. And when they begin to read your palms, and, and you know, and, you know, you open, you've opened up an altar, a spirit that will now begin to give, give direction. And what will happen is, listen to this, you've just allowed a spirit to come into your life legitimately. Anytime you go to the astrology section of the magazine, or you go and look at your supposed star, you've opened your life to the navigation of a spirit. Is this making sense? Anytime you go to a fetish priest or your mom or your dad tells you, look, this is just a little protection. There's no such thing as a little protection. You know, and they say, well, just, just put this here or just use this. You've just opened yourself to what? An altar or to the entrance of a spirit. And what am I trying to say to you essentially? Uh, what I'm saying is, listen to this. It is possible for you to be a Christian and walk in defeat. Why? Because, listen to this, last week, I gave an example of the fact that when I was in boarding school in Nigeria as a young boy, you know, um, I took my walkie-talkie to school, who remembers? And it was stolen. And somebody told me that, you know, I can tell you who, 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 who stole it. And I was like, how is that possible? He said, look, don't worry, I, somebody taught me this. Bring a Bible. So I brought my Bible. And you know, when you hear Bible, you think, oh, then God must be involved. <laughs> but I was ignorant. And then he took a key and, and a, 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 a string, a rope. And then he said, when each, you know, um, who are the people you suspect? I had about four or five people. He said, call each person's name. And as we did call each name, the, the Bible will not turn if it's not, the person is not the thief. When we got to a particular name, uh, Jones or whatever his name, the Bible would turn. If we went back the other way, the Bible would not turn. When we got back to his name, the Bible turned. But you know what? What we just did was that we, we created an altar and we invited the help of a spirit. But that spirit, you know what? Um, came in to help, but those spirits don't go away after that. And from that example, one of our members in America actually you know, we put the clip on, on, vi on the video. She said, ah, now I see that I opened up the door to the enemy. And she said she ignorantly, her family members, um, she comes from the south, like, you know, New Orleans, that kind of part in America. Her family members opened her up to something. And for years, we've known her for like four years or so. And this lady is unable to pray many times without sleeping. You know, she's always dozing off her and has all sorts of attacks. And for the first time, I now understood why. Because somewhere along the line, a door was opened, even though it seemed ignorant. What am I trying to say to you? Uh, what I'm saying to you is this. You can be a Christian and still be defeated. You see, when I, the longer I've been a Christian, I found out that in covenant work, the, work, the Lord can either fight for you or against you even though you are a believer. Oh, no, 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 no. You guys are looking like, Pastor, what, is, what are you saying? Let me repeat it. You may be a born-again Christian and God will be fighting against you. Why? Because God is on nobody's side. <laughs> you say, I'm a born-again child. But you know what? I'll show you a few things that it doesn't matter whether you're born again. If you break the law, the law will break you. Go and stand on, on, on a 20-story building and jump down. Say, I'm a born-again child. You'll be a born-again, empty, dumpty, head, broken. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. So what I'm saying is that there are laws. And when you, you uh, uh, without reading the scripture in detail, in Joshua 5, 13, 14, you will see that the, the children of Israel were about to enter the promised land, a land God promised them. And the night before, Joshua suddenly looks up and he sees a mighty warrior. This, this warrior was not a physical guy. It was some guy in the realm of the spirit. And he says, he, Joshua challenged him, he says, are you for us or are you against us? And the, 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 the warrior said, I'm the, I'm the commander of the, the, the Lord's army. That, is, that person is what you call Jehovah Sabbath. That's Jehovah the man of war. That was Jesus pre-incarnate. And he said, neither. I'm neither for you or against you. I am the Lord. <laughs> and so what he was essentially telling him is, are you for me or are you, against, are you against me? That will determine whether I am for you or against you. 
And what he was saying essentially is that you are a small fry. You are a little infinitesimal, minute, mediocre, small entity in the equation. Eh? And it's not your battle. He said the battle is the Lord's. So my question is, are you fighting this battle for the Lord or is it your own battle? If you are fighting with me, then I am with you. If you are fighting against, then I am against you. That is God's stand. Which means essentially, you could have given your life to Jesus, but if you are doing certain things that look contrary to the will of God, God is against you. Or you didn't say amen. I noticed you, you said, hmm, not amen. <laughs> Lift up your right and say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that I will be on the Lord's side. But in my word, my, my, my conduct, and in everything I do. But you know, the reason why I'm saying this is that, you know, we have to be careful how we live as believers. And, and we, we need to understand some realities that as believers, believers will have challenges. And if you don't, if you don't understand the dynamics of what is happening, you can't even get to a place where you are resentful towards God. I mean, I, I gave this in the first service about one day, uh, about this must have been nine years ago, I show up in church. Before I come to church, the Lord tells me, you know, to ask if there's anybody who knows someone connected with the name Elkanah. I always do this. Let me try this again. Anybody here knows an Elkanah? Just put up your hand if you do. You do? Put up your hand. Anybody else? You, okay. So, this is the first time I will see two people in a congregation who know Elkanah. Are they brother, sister, um, anybody, relative, anybody like that? Okay. So, friend. So, this person, her father was Elkanah. And as she was walking towards me, she was a first-time guest. As she was walking to my, towards me, I, the Lord told me to tell her that she would not go the way of her father. And she breaks down and starts crying, and I'm wondering why. And then I asked her why. She says, her father is dead. I said, okay, uh, that makes sense, isn't it? <laughs> but most of us, if we, if we say you will not die, we will not break down in tears. And then I asked, where's her mother? She said, her mother is dead. I said, do you have any siblings? She said, yes. There were seven of them from her, from her parents, but six of them are dead. She's the only one alive. And that the last one, the last of her siblings that died, died two and a half weeks before that day. Now, how many of you know that she must have understood that God knew her situation? Because what do you think will be the perennial thing on her mind? That <laughs> I must be next. That there is no other person standing in my family line. I am the only one left. And every single one of them died from different conditions. And what God did in that instance is that he showed that he was a covenant-keeping God to that lady. And he was trying to tell her that there's another covenant at play in your life that is taking individuals before their time. How many of you know God is still active and well? And that he will still show up on your behalf. To cut a long story short, we prayed for her. Listen to this. We're talking of nine years on. She's still alive and well. She's, she's in our North London church right now. And, <laughs> and she's, the, she's the first person in her family to celebrate her 60th birthday. This was two years ago. Now, what am I trying to say? The possibility is that a number of the other, or her other siblings were Christians. And she, especially, is a Christian. But how can a Christian continually see members of your family die? It means that, is it that God is asleep? No, another covenant is at work. Now, what does that mean for you and I? It means that we have to, <laughs> we, our eyes have to be open to certain things. And that's why it says, gather my saints together to me. Those who have made a covenant with me by what? Sacrifice. Which means the people who should gather themselves are the ones whose, whose subscription is active. Hmm. Not your neighbor. Tell them, is he talking about you? 
Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Don't worry, I'm not about to collect an offering. I'm just about to tell you the truth. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will what? Deliver you. What the scripture is saying essentially is that, listen to this, that not everybody that thinks that they are protected are really protected. So what are the things that will ensure, the six keys that will ensure that in the day of trouble, God will deliver you. That in the day of trouble, God will fight your battles for you. Are you interested in knowing? Okay, so let's do some business. Number one, renunciation or renouncing. Uh, I want you to lift up your right hand and say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every evil covenant <laughs> trying to speak against my life or my destiny, I renounce. I break it in Jesus' mighty name. Let me say this. It is important that you break every, every evil previous covenant. And the way this thing works is that, listen to this, spirits are stubborn, demonic spirits. The Holy Spirit and angels are very gentle. If you don't invite them, they don't come in. Evil spirits, if you don't invite them, they will, they will break in. <laughs> That's why the Bible says, do not give the devil a foothold because he will take a mile. Yeah. And, but you see, the Holy Spirit is very gentle. But it's important to know that evil spirits, that's why they are called evil. Yeah, they, 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 they enter where you don't even call them. Not to talk of when they, when they have entered, they refuse to leave. Demonic spirits are very stubborn. Uh, and so the first thing is that you must, you must work within legitimacy, your legal rights, and you must know your rights. Let me explain what I mean. So, Pastor Vim, please come again. Yeah. How many of you know this is my wife? If you didn't know before today, know now. Okay. And um, we were joined together in 1998, 6th of March. Okay. Chelsea and um, Kensington Registry. All right. Now, the point is this. We were not joined at a bar. Okay. We didn't see each other, and then one day we just saw, you know, or Starbucks uh, uh, cafe. And then we, we didn't tell the barista, oh, we love each other. Can you please over a cappuccino just, you know. <laughs> now, the point, the reason why I'm saying that is that it may sound funny, but before you make a covenant, it has to be at a registered altar, a place that heaven recognizes. Now, the point is this. If we were joined at Starbucks, and you say, uh, you sing this song, maybe all the people in the cafe sing, here uh, comes the bride and all of that. And then we now exchange the vows. Oh, I promise, I promise, this and that. You may now kiss the bride, we kiss the bride. And then, well, 30 minutes after that supposed agreement, I decide, oh, I don't like the way she sips her coffee. <laughs> and then, okay, I change my mind. Can I not do that? Yeah, I can do because... The place of the covenant, that altar has no power. But if I take her to the registry in Redbridge, and the registrar is there, the priest is there, and say, repeat after me. You know what? Immediately after they sign it in a book, I listen to this. If 10 minutes later on the drive home, um, I say, oh, let's go and uh, have lunch or whatever. I said, no, she wants to go somewhere else. And I said, okay, I I'm not interested in this marriage anymore. No, you cannot. No, I cannot say I changed my mind. And God forbid, the only way that the mind can be changed is that it cannot be changed. <laughs> <laughs> Except I go to a divorce court Get a lawyer and start a proceeding, and it will take time. Thank you, please appreciate her. It will take time, it will take fight, it will take, is this making sense? And you can, what I'm saying is that when you enter into a covenant, it's not easy to break. That is why, listen to this, eh? a lot of the challenges that we're having as Christians is that, oh, yeah, 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 the truth of the matter is, Oh, you are a Christian. You are a Christian. But listen to this. If we, we, we went strictly by the law, it's almost like you're practicing bigamy. 
A number of us are Christians because God accepts you at his altar, but many of us have not actually broken the old covenant. So you're married to two people. Yeah? You are a Christian, born again, the Lord honors it, but then uh, you didn't quite declare that there was somebody else in the picture. And that happens. Some people, you know, believe it or not, there are some people who are actually married, but they were also married to somebody else, and the union is not broken. Even if they married for papers, like they say, immigration. I know a couple of people, are, they were married, you know, in another country, and then they are married here, but then they bribe somebody uh, to cover the papers so that, uh, you, do, you, do you get what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I use that as an example, but not to bring anybody under any kind of condemnation. That's between you and the immigration service, not me. Yeah. Now, the, 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 the point, <laughs> I'm praying the Lord helps you. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, but the, 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 the point I'm trying to make is this. Watch this very closely. The point I'm trying to make this is that, look, in the realm of the spirit, you'll be amazed that it is full of legalities. And you're saying, but pastor, how is it possible for somebody to be joined to the Lord and to be joined to somebody else? It's very possible. Recently, I heard about a phone. Have you ever, ever heard about a dual SIM card phone? Oh, I only just found out it was possible. So in the past, I'll go to the U.S., yeah, and I'll carry two phones. Hello, hello, this is uh, London, my WhatsApp, somebody. Okay, the other one, hello, this is um, so, 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 and so. Uh, my AT&T phone. So somebody said, why are you doing that? I said, you know, you can put the two SIMs in the phone. I said, really? So I went to AT&T and then dual SIM. So when I want to make international calls, -da, I'm talking to my people in London. And then when I want to make a call, well, anyway, I switch it. So you can switch. Listen to this. This is how many Christians are. You are dual SIM. One moment you're saying, Father, Lord, I love you. Oh, more than anything, I love you. And then you tell him all on Sunday, but then Friday night. <laughs> no, tonight's going to be a good night. Tonight's going to be a good, good night. And then you're wearing all the skimpy things and, you know, strings and this and that. And then you're, you're showing them what your mama gave you. Ain't uh, and then you're dancing all the whatever and, you know, throwing it all down. And at the nightclub, you are the ones shouting the loudest in praise and worship there. Huh? You know what I mean? Is the other SIM card working? Touch somebody next to you and say, I think he's talking about you. <laughs> Tell them the way you are looking. The guilty look on your face betrays you, ain't it? Mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, let me tell you this. Let me tell you something. How many of you know the enemy can't get you if you are not on his frequency? <laughs> there are some text messages you will not receive if you never switch swim cards. I, 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 but the problem is that you're always switching. And so there are some viruses that can never get into your phone if you don't stay on the old SIM card. And that's why you have to renounce. The Bible says concerning Gideon, when God, when, when God called him that he was going to be a mighty man of valor, the first thing he said to him is in Judges 6.25, the same night the Lord said to him, take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years, and tear it down. Tell your neighbor, say, tear down that altar. Yeah. Huh. I believe it was uh, uh, President Ronald Reagan that told Gorbachev, he said, Gorbachev, Tear down that wall. And God is speaking to somebody today and say, call your, ask your neighbor, what's your name? What's your name? Okay. And so tell them, say, 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 Fred, tear down that altar. <laughs> it says the altar of Baal, the altar of witchcraft, the altar of the fetish priest you know, that your father has and cut down the wooden image that is beside it. Listen to this. This is a man that God told, you're a mighty man of valor. And that as you go into battle, I'm going to fight with you and contend for you. But before he goes, he said, go back and remove that SIM card. Tell your neighbor, say, remove that SIM card. 
<laughs> Listen to this. There are some covenants that your fathers or your mothers or your grandparents made that listen to this. You know, some of you don't know, it's, they, it's, they are still paying subscription on it. And they are still active. And that, that lady that I called Elkanah, remember, the likelihood is that what was happening is that they stopped paying. Maybe he, her grandfather made a covenant and there was, there was a, 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 an agreement that, you know, every year they would bring a sacrifice of some sort. But now they are Christians. So no more sacrifice. So you know what? The Spirit comes and takes a person. Lift up your right hand wherever you are. Say in the name of Jesus. Every contrary covenant or altar speaking against my life, speaking against my destiny, I cancel it. I decree and declare that my contract with you is now null and void. I decree and declare that you have no part or portion in my life. In Jesus' name. Number two, because we're talking about six hours. Are you awake and well? After renunciation, you need to understand the restrictions. Every covenant has restrictions. Say, Pastor, come on, get with the program. This is a new generation. Yeah. <laughs> this is a new generation, but listen to this. <laughs> the law of gravity is the law of gravity in every generation. What do I mean by that? Listen to this. This, our, your generation doesn't like rules. Say, you know, there are no laws. There are no, there are no rules. There, you, say, you say your truth is your truth. It's okay. In COVID, why didn't you say your own truth is, is your own truth? When they told you you must wear face masks and, and don't shake everybody, why do you say, my truth is my truth? COVID cannot penetrate me. It's all right. Everybody respected themselves. Everybody stayed within the laws. Huh? Why don't you say your truth is your truth? It's your own truth and take a live electronic wire and put it in your mouth. Yeah, there are restrictions. <laughs> you know, and these are what you call terms and agreements or terms and conditions. And so, you know, and which essentially means that, look, if you're going to live successfully in life, you need to understand the terms and agreements or conditions of life and live within them. And this is, and you know the problem? We don't read the terms and conditions. Don't worry, I'm like yourself. I'm guilty. I, in my family, they call me the gadget man. I love gadgets. You know, I get excited when I get a new gadget, you know. Um, this can do this, do this, and do that. You know, I buy them and stuff like that. So, this last two weeks, I bought three different gadgets. And guess what? All three didn't work. The most painful one was one that I got, you know, uh, when I, I don't go to the West End often, so when I do go, you know, somebody gave me a gift voucher. So, I went to Selfridges and I bought this massage gun, you know, it was a bit expensive in, from where I come from. I mean, my own part of, <laughs> of the world, you know. And I took it home excitedly, connected it, and I now took it and switched it on, and it didn't work. I pressed it from different corners in different ways for, the, for about 45 minutes. It still didn't work. I told my wife, I said, ah! Selfridges are still being fraudulent. <laughs> I said, I'm going to go back to that place and tell that guy who sold me this thing and tell, give him a piece of my mind. You know, really upset. So I went, came back the next day, tried it, just did one or two things, and it started working. And then I just said, ah, it's not self -reaches. There's somebody I need to tell a piece of my own mind. How many of you know the problem was with me? Now, the problem was with me because if I took the time out to read the uh, instructions, and then he then dawned on me, okay, this thing happened to two other gadgets before. <laughs> you know how we always tell, think everybody else is the problem? Yeah. And there's, so, there's so, something common between the three, me. <laughs> me are not reading the instructions. So there must have been something that maybe if I read it, they say, charge the, 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 Gadget fully before use. Revelation. 
Now, the point is this. How many of you read your Bible and read it fully? How many of you charge your gadget fully before you go out daily? You pray. Rather, what do you do? You just do one Mickey Mouse prayer. Heavenly Father, bless me, bless my food, bless my wife, bless my children too. Don't forget our puppy dog too. No, you, you, you do that and it's not enough to, to protect you on the day. You didn't charge fully. And you're expecting that, you, you, you know, you'll be faced with a challenge and then 12 angels will come. Not even an angel's feather will show up. <laughs> because, because the kind of charge you gave, <laughs> the angel won't move his, his, his toenail. <laughs> Tell your neighbors, I think he's talking about you. <laughs> Say the way you are, you, are, you are looking, you are looking suspicious. <laughs> Hallelujah. Leviticus 26, 3, 7 says, if you walk in my, my statutes, everybody say if. Do you know what if means? Which means if you don't, certain things won't happen. So it says, if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, which means if you charge it the way I said to charge it, you do this, I will give you rain in its season. And the land will yield its produce. But if you don't, that means you won't get rain. And your land will not yield. And you'll be wondering why, but I'm a, I'm a covenant child. You didn't follow the instructions. Hello? And then he says, I will rid the land of evil beasts, and the sword will not go through your land. You will chase your enemies, and they shall fall by the sword before. Which means, if you don't do this, the evil beast will ravage your land. Have you seen why some of us face certain attacks and we're wondering why maybe you haven't been reading the terms and conditions and understanding the boundaries the second thing is you need to understand under restriction understand the covenant restrictions and understand that you know there are penalties you know for breaking that restriction ecclesiastes 10 it says he who digs a pit will fall into it and whoever breaks through a wall will be beaten by a serpent the king james version says he who breaks the hedge, the serpent will bite. Simply, sim simple, simple. Huh? Very simple. What it essentially is saying is this. If you jump from a 20-story building, you will break your head. Hmm? The second thing it's, it's saying essentially, if in COVID times, you refuse to wear your mask and you're kissing everybody, and, and, and in this, it doesn't matter whether you are the one that opens the church and closes the door, and you are the last person at the vigil, listen to this. If COVID doesn't kill you, it will do something terrible to you. He that breaks the hedge, what? The serpent will bite. So how many things have I spoken about so far? The first is what? Renunciation. Second is what? Okay. And so now, um, the third is what? Okay. On, sorry, before I say the third thing, because the restriction is really weird, you know, whatever it is. Restriction means that, listen to this, you will have, God will put some confines on you if he's going to do great things with you. Let me explain what I mean. So I said this in the first service, I'll say it again. We, we had a conference in 2001, and... I got born again in 1990. That was about 11 years from then. And I was already a pastor here in London and everything. We finished the conference. The conference was called Power Vision. Theme, Money, Sex, and Power. Blessings, a Curse. Very powerful conference. And I decided after the conference to go away on a retreat. So I decided to go to Bath. Who knows where Bath is? Okay. So I decided to go to Bath. Is it in Somerset, isn't it? Somewhere around there, yeah. And, and um, on my way there, I think it was a two and a half journey. And as I was driving there, I was listening to a message. And it was uh, by a preacher and it was essentially talking about, the, the theme of the message was basically Genesis, Genesis 17, which says, walk before me and be thou blameless. I, I didn't remember the name of the message. It was just, I just remember that. I now got to the hotel, really nice hotel. I was supposed to be there for a few days. The first night I got there, 
you know, I was fasting, so it was now time to break my fast. When you break your fast, you look for food to eat, isn't it? So I checked, you know, and found out that there were two restaurants open that night. And one was a really plush restaurant where, you know, you had to dress nice. And they had, you know, free course meal, steak, chicken, these, and beef stroganoff, and blah, that kind of what I call food, okay? Now, <laughs> the other restaurant was actually like a cafe, kind, you know, those kind of they do, you know, uh, is it bistro they call them or whatever. Well, very small restaurant, not a lot. And, you know, the best on the menu would probably be maybe chicken nuggets or fish and chips or something, something like that, some kind of sandwich. So between you and I, be honest, which one will you go to? All those who will go to the first restaurant, put up your hand. All those who will go to the second one, put up your hand. All those who are liars, put up your hand. <laughs> All those who don't know, who don't speak English, put up your hand because some people didn't put up their hand. Now, the point is this. Most of us will go for the first. At least I was on my way to the first. Because I want some steak, man. Man, some sirloin. Or what's the other one now? Not, I was going to say, there's, there's one, the marble. Yeah, riba. Yeah. You know. Anyway, watch this. On the way down there, the Lord said, don't go to the first one. I said, Lord, whose side are you on? <laughs> I've been fasting all day. You know, I just said, don't go to the first one. Go to the second one. So I obey God, even though when I'm walking past the first restaurant, I'm like, we bring a sacrifice of prayer. <laughs> you know, here I'm sacrificing my steak. And then I sit down in this little cafe, you know, and I order my maybe... Ch uh, fries and chicken nuggets. And while I'm ordering my meal, I look up and I see somebody walking. One man walking like this in his glasses. I said, this is Dr. Onuzo. I said, good Lord. If this is Dr. Onuzo, okay, Onuzo is a mentor of mine, you know, <laughs> then that means God has something to say to me. Now, think about this. If I had gone to the other restaurant, I would have missed him. And then he walks, right? I said, sir, what are you doing here? He said, what are you doing here? <laughs> because, listen to this, neither of us had any business in that place. If I went to a, a, a hotel in the West End, maybe there's a slim probability we could bump it together. All the way in Bath. He said, I was just passing through. I just wanted to wait on the Lord for one day. And I decided, to, I said, sir, it's because of me God brought you here. And so I said to him, I said, sir, what are they saying? That's the way he talked. I said, what is heaven saying? He said, eh, 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 eh. they are saying, walk before him and be thou blameless. How many of you know God just spoke? I went back to my hotel room very sober. <laughs> that the Lord brought me all the way here. As I got to the hotel room, I turned on the television. The news came on, and guess what? Have you heard of Jeffrey Archer, the author, former politician? That was when his judgment was just passed, and he was he had he was sentenced to some case where something about prostitution or whatever, and then he was put in jail. And the Lord told me clearly that if you don't walk before me and be blameless, this is how you and all that ministers of God are going to end up in jail and with scandals. How many of you know that uh, they say once has God spoken twice? Uh, listen to this. I lay flat on the floor. I was begging God, please be helping me. Help me to walk blameless. Somebody say covenant restrictions. Just the last week, I celebrated 32 years in ministry. Anytime, any, 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 any time. No, 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 please don't, please. Don't get me into trouble, please. Please don't clap. Please. That, that clap is, is, is sounding like you're saying, oh, I did well. No, the Lord has been helping me. And so people, you know, so people always say, oh, yes, Pastor, 32 years of scandal-free ministry. It's true. It's a fact. But that fact, please, it is not quite like that. 
the truth of the matter is that it sounds like, I'm, oh, that I've been so blameless, you know, I'm so holy. Hey, listen to this. I have the same proclivities like you. The things that you do or want to do that you don't like, me too. My own flesh too wants to do it. But when I remember the covenant restrictions, <laughs> when, when, when I remember the consequences of violation, my body has to respect itself. And the matter, it doesn't matter who dangles their waist in front of me. I say, you, you, it's not me we take to jail. <laughs> Dangle your waist somewhere else. Is this making sense? <laughs> so that's why I say, anytime you say, just be telling, say thank you, Jesus, for him. <laughs> you, 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 you get what I'm saying? And, and I, I say that to say, listen to this. You know, there's a certain amount of consecration that's required if you're going to walk in real covenant power. And, and this is this. I walk in, in God's prophetic power and the supernatural. And you see it increasing in my life, increasing. Is why? Because heaven sees I walk in the covenant restrictions. If you don't walk in that restriction, the more the power, eh, if you touch the wires any hour of electricity, you know, that wire that is, is generating uh, television, this Netflix and things, and then one day you just say, you just take the wire and you just say, ah, you want to just bite it. What will it do? You will disintegrate. Yeah. You will get electrocuted. Why? Because, you know, they hire the power. Guess what? They hire the Electrocution. May you not be electrocuted. Amen. You know, that's why you don't see a lot of power in your life. Because God has toned down the power so that, because you've decided not to maintain the restrictions. So in his mercy, he didn't release plenty of power in your life. You want to go and sleep with your boyfriend or girlfriend and come out back to church and say, I decree and declare. If God gave you the power behind that decree, you will die. It's you that will die. <laughs> <laughs> if you pray that prayer, say, all those enemies are doing this in my life, you'll be the first to drop dead right there because you are the enemy to yourself. Look at your neighbor. I say, I think that word is, is sounding like your own. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. Somebody else say, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, say, Lord, have mercy. Now, now my laptop is refusing to move. I think, so, okay, now it's, it's uh, I have to keep coming back here. Now, the point is this. Somebody needs to help me with this, please. The, the, the point is this. I need some technical help. The point is this. There's a lot more I, I, should, have, I should say about this restriction and your consecration, but I don't have the time to unpack it. I'll do it in the, in the, on Tuesday. I need to tell you about the rest of this message. And the next point is, how many things have we spoken about so far? The first is what? Renunciation. What else? Restriction. What else? So we're going to three now. And the, who remembers what the third one is? Yes, retribution. Retribution is if you break... Eh? The restrictions, they are retributions. And without looking at my notes, let me, let me say this. God is, look, the, the, the father you go with God. Are you guys afraid? I hope not. <laughs> the, the, the father you go with God, hmm? the, um, what's that? the stricter the retribution. Some of you guys, you know, you do stuff and nothing happens for you. We, we know. <laughs> you, we, yeah, we're safe, we're cool. <laughs> we, we, we know that, listen to this, there are some levels you get to that they are what you call covenant uh, retributions, which is God told Moses, and let me tell you God's pattern. God told Moses that in Exodus 4, go to Pharaoh, go to Egypt, take this rod and judge Pharaoh. He brought 10 plagues on Pharaoh. 
brought judgment on Pharaoh, on Pharaoh and his children and killed all the firstborns. How many of you know that's power? On his way there, guess what? If you look at Exodus 4, the Bible says, let, let me read it so you don't think I'm pulling this out of the whatever. He said in Exodus 4, 24, and it came to pass on the way at the encampment. This is when God told Moses, go to Pharaoh and do it, that the Lord met with him to bless him. Is that what he says? And the Lord sought to kill him. Oh, who's ever read that before? God was trying to kill Moses. God. Now, some of you have ever said, God, are you trying to kill me? Sometimes he may be trying to. <laughs> yeah, in, the, in this instance, God was, listen to this. God, isn't God his covenant keeping God? Do you remember he said to you that He's not on anybody's side. <laughs> it depends on whose side you are on. And in this particular instance, you know, Moses was going to do what God told him to do, and God stands before him and says, I'm going to kill you. So, Lord, what did I do to you? You did not keep the restrictions. Violation. What was that? God had told him, through Moses himself, that every child that is born must be circumcised. But Moses' wife talked him out of it. Wives. <laughs> Listen to this. I, I, am I talking to someone? Now, the reason why I'm saying this is that, listen to this, God is trying to move us, every single person here to a, level, a, a higher level of power. And before you move into that level of power, God is trying to make sure that you have everything sorted out. The Bible says that God now tried to kill Moses. Why? Because he had disobeyed the covenant. Sometimes, listen to this, it can be your spouse that made you disobey. It could be your children that will expose you and make you not obey God. And then you'll find out that certain things start to attack. You know, I didn't say this in the first service. I'll say it in the second service very quickly. We have a church in Houston. And I remember um, after one breakthrough night, I was about, all, all our people in our cluster there were gathered. There were about 20 or so odd people. And all I wanted to do was just run away after because I was tired. Then I knew the, the people there wanted me to pray for, see each of them one by one. I, I said, no, I'll just pray one general prayer and run. And then while I was praying the general prayer, I got a revelation of somebody there who, I said, ah, is there anybody? I mentioned the name of a hospital. He said, oh, our daughter uh, is, goes there. Oh, she has cancer. They said, then I mentioned something else. This same family, oh, it's me. Before that, whatever, they had told me at the beginning that, oh, they would like to see me after the service. Long story short. While I was still praying and prophesying, I said, is there anybody here who has like this uh, Indian, I described it, they called it dream catcher. Has anybody heard of a dream catcher? Does anybody have a dream catcher in your house? Just put it up your hands very quickly. You might not put up your hand, but if you do have one, make sure you take it down when you get home. Why? Because it is a covenant violation. A dream catcher invites, it's an ancient uh, um, American Indian, whatever, to attract spirits. Anyway, I said to them, I said, when you get home, take that thing down, burn it, and, and send me proof that it has been burned. They sent me the proof. Listen to this. What were they trying to see me for? They said, look, um, my wife is ill since we moved to Houston for the last two years. You know, I haven't had a job. She, someone is always falling ill. My, uh, their daughter had cancer. This, that, this, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I, there, there's no money, nothing. So I just said they should burn the thing, and I prayed for them. This was Sunday evening. By Monday, yeah, the wife went for a job interview. She got it. Tuesday went an hour. She got it. Wednesday went an hour. Got it. On by the time they got to Thursday, the husband had been promoted at work. By Friday, they bought a new car. Every day of the week, a blessing. And you wonder, 
How? Why? Because you shall not worship any other God but me. That's what the Lord says. And that, that was a covenant violation that they placed in their house and they did not know. Is this making sense? And the moment that thing was removed, then God showed up. Now, <laughs> number, what was it? Four is revival. And what is revival? Revival essentially means, somebody say fire. fire. Come on, say it again, say. Fire. Somebody say fire. fire. Say fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen to this very carefully. <laughs> you know what? I said to you, every altar needs an active priest. You don't set up an altar and, and go away from the altar. The, the, look, the demonic altars, they are very active. They don't mess. People who go into the occult, they, they wake up in the middle of the night, they dress whatever, and they do whatever it is they do. Meanwhile, you are snoozing second drive, going in second gear, and all of that in your sleep. You know, and listen to this. Who do you think God will defend? The person with the active altar or the one with, whose, whose altar is dormant? Now, what am I saying? I, 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 said, I said this to uh, the people in the first service as well. I said, every altar requires somebody who will keep the fire burning. And, you know, the Lord showed me two days ago. I woke up, he woke me up in, in the middle of the night, 2, 2 a.m., and, you know, and I was wondering why, because I was really tired. And he said, he showed me a vision to start praying for T.D. Jakes. And I saw very clearly, you know, five witches attacking his root to cause him to fall, scandal. And <laughs> I was like, I was really tired. I said, Lord, I don't understand your logic because I'm not his cousin, his nephew, or whatever. So, I mean, Lord, Lord let me sleep. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about? I said, I don't have any. He doesn't send any money to me. So, what? You know, so as I'm, I'm praying, he said, look, rise up and pray for this man. And as I'm praying, guess what? I see some fetish priest wearing white in my room. As in, like a vision. And then he says, this, I did that to get your attention on this. And I say, you are sleeping, and there are people who are active with their priesthood against you. That doesn't mean you shouldn't sleep. It just means you should be more sensitive. Hello? Are you scared? Good. <laughs> no. Now, I'm not saying this will be your everyday life, but I'm just saying it will be. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying that, listen, this is reality. But you should never be afraid. You should just be somebody who is active on your altar. There's a scripture in the book of Ezekiel. It talks about 70 priests where in the temple. And then he now says that these 70 priests, as it were, you know, you'll be, you'll be excited. He says, 70 men of the elders of the house of Israel in their midst, Jezaniah, the son of Shaphan, each man had a censer in his hand and a thick cloud of incense went up. How many of you know that if you see that in your, in your community, 70 priests are, are using the censer, won't you say, ah, we are covered. Uh, it's like we have a, we have a prayer chain. 60, how many, 60 days of prayer. Anytime I go on there, at least 24, 25, 30 people, I say, ah, people are praying. Censor. Wow, altar. Ah, we are covered, we are covered. But then, when, when, when you look close out, see what it says. It says, uh, we're, we're closing now. Then he said to me, son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel do in the dark? Huh? Every man in the room of his idols. What the Lord was saying essentially is this. The fact that somebody is standing doing priesthood doesn't mean they are not corrupted. A person can be joining the prayer chain and watching pornography on the side. Or join the prayer chain and have a side chick on the side. And guess what? What the Lord is saying is that there could be 70 corrupted priests and you think your altar is activated. Or what it is, it is corrupted. And it is not love. Number five. 
What is number five? Number five is realignment. What this essentially means is come back to God. And we see that with Jacob in Genesis 35, 1. He says, then God said to Jacob, arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. Tell your neighbor, say, realignment. Tell them, return, repent, remove, and renew your covenant commitment. You see, Jacob was defeated on every side. If you look at the life of Jacob, after God had blessed him, one moment, somebody raped his daughter. The next one, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? His sons killed somebody. The next one, he lost his wife. And then you're wondering, but didn't God have a covenant with him? Yes, God had a covenant with him, but he did not keep the terms fully. After a while, when God blesses you, you begin to get a bit big-headed. And then you begin to forget the little details. And so Jacob began to forget that he made a promise to God that when God blesses him, he will come back and build God's house. And that he will come back and be paying the vow. So you know what? When you forget, God uses circumstances to remind you. And so he began to lose things and lose people. And then when he, God got his attention, God said to him, says, Retour, arise, go back to Bethel and dwell there. Build an altar, make an altar there uh, to God who appeared to you when you fled. And then he said to him, and Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, put away the foreign gods that are amongst you. Purify yourselves and change your garments. Listen to this. This is what happens when God prospers us and we get rich. What happens is that everybody begins to pick up all sorts of things. Jacob was worshipping only God, but his wife had another God. And then what happened is that she died in childbirth. The children too were mingling with the children of the Canaanites. And they were picking up things. And God said, get your whole house back together. In recent times, you know, about four or five weeks ago, I called my whole family and I said, everybody, we are coming back to God fully. Every one of us. And I said, the church is doing a cluster campaign. I told my sons, they try their best, but the best is not good enough for all. All of us' best is not good enough. Everybody will meet on Monday and we are all going to pray. Somebody said, somebody say, return to Bethel. Yeah. Initially, they were like, oh, I have this. I said, no, you don't have anything. You will, that day will be consecrated to the Lord, to Jehovah God, <laughs> who has been protecting us. And then the last point is reclaim. Somebody say reclaim. If you want God to fight your battles for you, you have to reclaim the areas where the enemy has taken. And the only way to do it is by going back and making a sacrifice. Listen to this. The, 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 the demonic priests that have been fighting your family, they are very, very, very diligent too. Oh, you don't know. They wake up on time. They do their sacrifices. Do you know there was a witch? Maybe I should stop saying witches. Sorry. So, so because I think I'm scaring you guys. <laughs> you know, but do you know there, there are witches? You didn't know that. I think I should preach another message. I want you to talk to three people and say, God's going to bless you. God's going to help you. God's going to protect you. I see you walking on the streets of favor. Hey, high stepping into bigger things. Bros. Open your eyes, oh. <laughs> it's not just like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen to this. If you're going to reclaim territory, you have to match fire for fire. There was a particular couple who, um, you know, they were going through some terrible marital problems. And somebody that I know, yeah, God opened his eyes to say, somebody stole a photograph of theirs, yeah, and took the photograph. You, you people that post your, all your photographs on, uh, on Instagram, as you, are uploading, as you are uploading it, some people are downloading it. <laughs> and, and they took the photograph, their wedding photograph, what it was, split it into two, and then turned them back on each other. And they put it at an alt or whatever, and some candles, and we are saying, so, so, and so, maybe uh, Jack and Jill, break up, Jack and Jill, break up, Jack and Jill. And then start fighting over toothpaste, over little things, over this, over that, over food. And they were almost going for divorce. When their pastor, God opened his eyes, said, you better pray. Somebody is staying up at night, 
to say break. You are sleeping all night and say you want to go for therapy. Therapy will not help this one. <laughs> not that therapy does not. You know, prayer and therapy. Kayabatos. Listen to this. I don't know about you. The Bible says Samuel took a lamb and he offered it to the Lord. And then the Bible says, as he did it, the Lord thundered the thunder. Listen to this. Some of you, it is not counseling you read, read, need right now. You need the thunder of the Lord. Some of you, it is not, it is not oh, you know, you need to talk to say, say, and so. Yeah, yeah. So you're talking to say, say, and so. Open up your mouth and begin to pray your own prayer, you know, and fast your own fasting. And as you do so, listen to this, you will provoke the altars of God to fight the altars of the enemy on your behalf. Let's stand up as we pray. I don't know about you, but listen to this. I believe that there's somebody here that God is going to fight on your behalf. Uh, can we pray for just a few minutes? Is that okay? Yeah? I want you to lift up your voice wherever you are. Listen to this. I don't know what it is. I'm not saying that every problem is a spiritual problem, but listen to this. I can assure you a percentage of it is. And I don't know what it is, you know, in your own life, where it is that you are facing a battle, but I want you to, to begin to speak right now that God fight on my behalf. Lord, fight on my behalf. Now, the only way you're going to get God to fight on your behalf is make, when you make sure you are realigned with God. I don't know what area of your life where you have opened up the door. I don't know what area of your life that you have, you have, you have been lax. You know, you know. Maybe you, 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 it was pornography or, you, or something you did or, you know, something or the other. And then the Lord says, hey, you know, return to me. Realign. Remove that thing from your house. Return, return that girl's whatever. That girl should return that thing he, he gave to you. Yes, remove it from your house. Remove it from your life. Yeah, because those are the idols. Those are the things that have brought compromise and they are corrupting your altar. Robatas kataparatas. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Marosoto paraban. Zoporo paraban. Mesute kele protoso valikede. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth. Now, if you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is the time to do so. You are saying, Pastor, please pray with me. Pray for me. I know this service has been extended a little, but I think it's important today to do this. Hallelujah. You are saying, you cannot say for certain that if you die today, you are going straight to heaven. You can't say that. You don't know that. Well, this is the time to make that decision. It means, listen to this, that your sin card has the old covenant working, and you don't have a, a covenant with God. And so you are exposed and God is not duty-bound, has no obligation to protect you. If you cannot say for certain that if you die today, you are going straight to heaven, then, oh, you need, to, you need to put up your hand right now. Somebody's going to slip a card into your hands. Or um, uh, if you want the digital version, there, there's, a, there's a QR code on the screen. Scan it, and somebody will reach out to you. You're saying, Pastor, pray with me, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Just do that very quickly. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. We are praying that every evil covenant, speaking against our lives, speaking against our destiny, anything that is causing any tragedy, any mishap, any miscarriage, in the name of Jesus, we break it, we curse it. We cancel it, we destroy it, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, 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 in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We did this in the first service. I'm going to do this before we close uh, in a few minutes. If you're here today, I believe that, listen to this. This month, God wants to bring a shift to certain people's lives. You know, if somebody was busy arguing with me on whatever that Oh, now why didn't I preach a Mother's Day message last Sunday? I said, because there's fire on the mountain. <laughs> and there will be many other Mother's Days, you know. So, but you preach Father's Day. I said, yeah, do you want to argue with the person that sent me? <laughs> you know, there, there's some critical matters. Yeah, and we, it is important for us to deal with these things. 
Does this make sense? Yeah, should we honor our mothers? Yeah, we should do. We actually um, had a whatever, a special whatever for them. And we said, look, bring your mothers. But very few people registered for it, so we just canceled it. But there's somebody, perhaps maybe your life will be spared by this series of these messages. There's somebody here, perhaps maybe a loved one of yours will be spared. And so there's somebody here that perhaps maybe your child in fact, let me say this. There's somebody's child who is on the verge of insanity. There's a covenant that is saying that not too long from now, this should be triggered because there has been a violation. And, but God is going to intervene for you. Amen. There's somebody here who, who there's a covenant operative in your life that says that um, you, will, you begin to lose things. But today... We're going to change that situation. Amen. I said today we will change that situation. Amen. I said today it will change. Amen. So I want us to do something because listen to this. The only thing, the Bible says, if, if, if do not give the devil a foothold. The only time the devil has legitimate ground that God, God's hands are tied, he can't do anything, is we, if we open the door to him. Well, God said, well, you open the door, so what can I do? So if there is any area, I said something before, some of you might not have gotten it. Listen to this. Jacob did his best to work with God. And on God's instruction, he left Laban's house. Guess what? And God told him, don't take anything with you. He didn't take anything. And then you know what? When he left the place, Laban started to chase him and came after him. Why? Because he noticed his idol was missing. His God was missing. He said, you stole my idol. He said, no. Jacob said, no. And then Jacob swore. He said, your idol is not with me. If, if your idol is with me, he then cursed. He said, then let this, this and that happen. What he did not know is that he didn't steal it, but his wife stole it. Is this making sense? He did not steal it, but his wife stole it. And so listen to this. this is, we don't understand legality. And he was so confident. And sometimes we might not be the one out of place, but maybe our children are. Or there's somebody in our family who is doing something, who has opened a door. And so I, I want you to pray for yourself and your family members that anything that is in my house speaking against my life, my children, anything that is, is in and around, that is, uh, is creating an open door, and sadly, his wife died. Why? Because he, he placed a curse on his own family without him knowing it. In the name of Jesus. And the last call I want to make, if, if you want to restore your covenant with God, you want to rededicate, you want to, you know, remove, and you're saying, Lord, I need fire on my, I need it to revive, I need to come back to you, I need to repent, I need to remove this, just come forward quickly, come this way, come this way, I want to pray with you, God bless you, this is not a time to be ashamed or be, whatever, come, quick, 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 there's space on the altar, quick, 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 just a few minutes, quickly, quickly, Mato Seke, say, Lord, have mercy, help me, help me, help me, Help me, Lord, quickly, quickly, quickly. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Lord, rekindle the fire on my altar. Help me, Lord. Remove those. And you are saying to Lord, I remove those idols. I remove those things from my heart. I remove those things from my life. And when you leave this place, you are going back home to return stuff, to remove stuff. Return that thing. Return that jewelry. Return that. Begin to thank. Just begin to tell him, we're, we're closing now. We usually would not spend this long, but we are doing this because we know Mantara Katasef. Father Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we are asking you to have mercy upon us. When you bring a message like this, this kind of message doesn't come every Sunday, but when you bring it, it's because you want to help us. Lord, we are praying by your spirit that you will help the helpless. The same way when I went to bath and I heard what you said, walk before me and be blameless. I lay flat on the floor and I ask you to help me because I know I am, I am human, I am weak. Strengthen these people. Help them, oh God. Help them. Help them. 
help them. Lord, don't fight against them. Fight for them. Fight on their behalf. I'm praying by your spirit, Lord, that you will make them stronger than the enemy. Give them the grace to stand as true priests whose, whose, whose sacrifice is not corrupted. And we're praying that not too long from now that these people will begin to see your hand like never before. I release fresh fire from heaven now over your lives and over your altars. And I pray that you'll begin to hear the voice of God again like never before. Receive life. Receive grace. Receive, you receive recovery. Receive restoration in every area of your life. Give the Lord a powerful hand clap as we go back to our seat. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So we're, 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 we're good. Do we have Thanksgiving today? Wow. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, you may be seated for a minute or two, please. So we would normally be um, closed by 2 o'clock, but how many of you know this was important? Yeah, very significant. It's more important than your Sunday lunch. Okay, Sunday lunch you will have every Sunday. This you will not have always. Can I ask you to bring out your offering very quickly? Let's, let's, let's be bless the Lord. Were you blessed? Okay, so let's, let's bring out our offering quickly. Hallelujah. Amen to Jesus. Bring out your offering. Bring out your offering. And uh, um, there are various means and methods of giving. And the Lord will honor your giving in Jesus' name. Amen. In the next few minutes, um, we, we, let me see. We have a few thanksgivings to do. You know, um, we will do this very quickly. The Bible says that we should rejoice with those who rejoice. And um, it also says we should mourn with those who mourn. You will not mourn soon. Amen. And we will not have, to, we, 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 you will not have to mourn with anybody. Amen. And there's something about sowing seeds. And sometimes we sow seeds of money, but we also sow seeds of our time. If you have to go in the next few minutes, you, 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 you can do. But can we spend a few minutes just thanking God for these people? Is that okay? And then we'll, we'll, we'll go quickly. Very quickly. Can we have Ama Mbegi, um, parents and the child, Jennifer Kabwe, uh, very quickly, uh, Joseph Temenu, um, very quickly, and family quickly, and online we have somebody celebrating their 33, um, 33rd birthday, Zera Talib, and can we have Sounds of Liberty Comfort as they come forward and we dance and just pray for them and then we close the service, hallelujah. Amen. If you want the quicker, shorter service, let me just tell you in advance, come for the 10 a.m. Don't worry, this one is because we have restrictions of time. So before 12, we are done so we can start the second time. But this one will be done in another few minutes. Hallelujah. Were you blessed today? Okay. So let's have those, the families come forward quickly.
Thanksgiving means you are grateful. Amen. So I want to give us just one minute. Let us show God with our dance. Amen. That we are joyful and we are coming to celebrate what he's doing in our lives. Amen. Please don't let the congregation out dance you because I can see some people out dancing you. Amen. And they are not doing Thanksgiving. Amen. Come on. Hey, my God is good. and we're dedicating this beautiful young lady, Nora Emily. Amen. Do you want to carry her, cradle her in your hands so that I can put my hand on her head? Father, we thank you. We thank you for Nora Emily. We thank you for uh, preserving her and keeping her. Her name means honor, dignity, light, excel. We in decree and declare this will be her portion in the name of Jesus. She will be a person who attracts honor. Her dignity will attend her life. She will carry your light. She will excel in Jesus' name. We soak her in the blood. We decree and declare because of the blood, the enemy will not find an entrance point into her life. She is divinely preserved and kept. Every time we hear of her, it will be good news in Jesus' name mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Nora Emily. I believe there's another baby online or no? No baby online. Okay, so this is the um, 30th birthday. Hallelujah. And then there's somebody else online that is 30. Is it 33? Okay, trying to, do I, should I do a, try, a trying to prayer? Okay, so, well, you just think, hello, mommy. Good to, good to see you. Uh, good to see John's mom and Joseph's mom. Are you a mommy's boy? Yeah. <laughs> you are the only boy, so you must be mommy's boy. <laughs> Amen. I'll be proud to be one. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we thank you for your hand upon Joseph. We thank you for the day he was born. And, Lord, we just rededicate him on this day to your altar and we decree and declare that any other prior covenant is broken concerning his life we tie him to the altar of jehovah to jesus christ and we begin to decree and declare that the new covenant is operative in his life that the new covenant is operative in his life and we break every other contrary covenant and we decree and declare that no evil shall come near his dwelling we decree and declare that in the name of Jesus, that as he walks with God, he will hear God, he will walk in clarity. We decree and declare that, that in the name of Jesus, he will live and not die. Amen. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus that he will walk upon the high places of Amen. the earth. We decree and declare that God has not given him a spirit of fear, but of love, self-control, power, and a sound mind. I decree and declare that in the name of Jesus that he will become all that God has called him to be. He will fulfill his calling and in his ministry. I decree and declare that all shall be well with him. <clears throat> that no reproach shall overtake his life. But that his life will bear witness to the hand of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a powerful hand clap. Let's thank him. Yeah? Okay, so thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you for, for extending your, your, your heart, uh, you know, to spend a few minutes to uh, celebrate with these people. So I want to pray with you and pray for you that as you go out, that not too long from now. Is there another one? Oh, okay, welcome. Huh? Okay, S sit down for a minute, please. They, 
they, they said that they, 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 they have one thing to do very quickly, and then I'll pray for you as we go. So please do it quickly. I'll stand here so that it's short and sharp, and then I'll, yeah. And um, just to run through a few things, we just want to welcome those worshiping with us for the first time. So if you're here in the service right now, and you're worshiping with us for the first time, can I just ask you to do a show of hands, please? If you're worshiping with us, thank you very much. God bless you. I think there's someone over there. If, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, I saw you when you came in. <laughs> so please just show your hands, please. And um, yeah, so very quickly, I'll just tell you about the Liberty Church. We are the real church. And the real is R-E-A-L. We're using the acronyms to tell you what we are about. So R stands for relevant. And we say that every time you come to church, every time you come into our midst, you would hear um, a relevant word like you did today, a transforming word. E is for expressive. Thank you very much. So we believe everyone is gifted and talented. We use our gift to honor God. A is for authentic. And we say to you, come as you are. And we believe that the transforming power here will turn your lives around, that you become all that God has called you to be. And L stands for? Liberated. Yes, for where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So uh, we are very much welcome to join us. We say to you, if you do not have a Bible-believing church, if you do not have a church that you currently go to, what do we say to them? So please kindly join us. So can I just ask that you stand up wherever you are right now? And... There is a reception for you at the back. Our pastors would like to meet you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So if you just go with it. Well, I'll be joining you myself and my wife or all my wife. We're coming there to pray with you shortly. So, all right, so just give us a couple of minutes and we'll be with you yeah. shortly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So I just want to run through just very few things left. So if you're worshiping with us for the second time, so you've been last Sunday, you're coming back for the second time, we do have a gift for you. You can pick that out on your way out in the foyer. Um, we also say to you, if, you're, if you drive into church, please be mindful of, you know, how you park, respect the neighbors and their spaces, you know, stay within the rules like pastor just preached to us. Um, there is an information desk at the back, at the back in the foyer. Um, there's a welcome desk for your information. If you want to know more about what we do, pick that up there. And our pastors are very active on social media, Instagram. So kindly follow Pastor Shala, Pastor Bimbo, follow the Liberty Church account to keep abreast of all the information and things happening here. Um, at the end of the service after Pastor's prayer, there will be a prayer line here. Uh, for all ordained leaders that will be here, they want to pray with you. So you're trusting God, believing God for anything. They are here. Uh, they've been anointed. And, um, you know, they'll join you in prayer. And, um, yes. And the last thing, if you were in the first service, can I just ask if you just do a show of hands? You attended the first service. We want to quickly count. Um, our hosts are ready to count. So do a show of hands very quickly. Thank you very much. Just keep your hands up, please, very quickly. We're counting. Thank you. God bless you. The Lord honor you as you raise your hands up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for hovering over you like a hawk, but time has been fast. Let's, 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 let's stand up as we pray. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we thank you for these wonderful people, and we thank you for what it is you've started in their lives. I pray what you've started, you will finish, you will complete as they go, go with them. I pray that you will protect them, preserve them. Lord, you are their covenant help. Fight their battles for them. Help them walk in agreement with you. Help them not walk outside of the restrictions. Help them not experience any repercussions or retributions from covenant violations. I'm praying that you will have mercy upon them as they walk, Father Lord, and begin to uh, um, listen to your voice. Help them to walk upon the high places of the earth. Order their steps and lead them into doors of opportunity. Grant them favor. Send helpers to help them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful week ahead. See you next week.